Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is the New Testament in 31 days and we are on day 18. Today we will be finishing up the book of Acts, chapters 23 through 28, and starting Romans and reading chapters 1 and 2. So, lots of reading to get done today, so let's go ahead and get started in Acts chapter 23, verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day. The high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou wit whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And it stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of that people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. When there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them, and to bring him into the castle. The night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain the Jews banded together and bound themselves into a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy, and they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. When Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. And Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So t he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is that that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men which have bounded themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charge him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen three score and ten, and spearmen two hundred, at the third hour of the night. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner, Claudius Lysias, unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. When I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. 
And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. And the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. When the governor had read the letter, he asked what province he was, and when he understood that he was of Cilicia. I will hear thee, he said, when thine accusers are also come and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Acts 24, verse 1. And after five days, Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. When he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law but the chief captain lysias came upon us and with a great violence took him away out of our hands commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him and the jews also assented saying that these things were so then paul after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak answered for as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues, nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation in offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had aught against me. Or else let the same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me, while I stood before the council, except it to be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, Touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them, and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul, to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or to come unto him. After certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore he sent for him, the oftener and commune with him. But after two years, Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Oh, man. Next 25, there we go. Now when Festus was coming to the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem, 
Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul, and besought him, and desired favor against him, that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, that, and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. When he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about, and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Hast thou appealed unto Caesar? And to Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, therefore, when they were come hither without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved into the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him unto Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city, at Festus's commandment, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom have I no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Therefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had I might have somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. It's 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straitest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of our God to our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? 
I really thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and, and when they were put to death I gave my voice against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. When we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and to whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. For the, these causes the Jews caught me in the temple, and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying, None other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should shew light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Acts 27 1. When it was determined that we should sail unto Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band. Entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristocrus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed unto Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Sicilia, Cilicia, excuse me, I always get that confused, <laughs> Cilicia, Cilicia, and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Snidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed unto Crete over against Salmone, and hardly passing it came to a place which is called the Fair Heavens, nigh in, whereunto was the city of Alessia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said to them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the landing and ship, 
but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken of by Paul. Because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more port advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice, and there to winter, which is in heaven of Crete, and lie toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurosidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and, fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be given it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then Fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said unto the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. When he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. When he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. When they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible to thrust in the ship. When they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rubber uh, rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and fore part struck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should be cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Acts 28 verse 1 When they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Mil Mil Milita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled the fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. 
And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom thou he hath escaped to see, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Albeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Go from one extreme to another extreme. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief men of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courtesy. It came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed they laded us with such things as were necessary. After three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days, and from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium, and after one day, the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Petolia, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome, and from thence... When the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as the apple, at Api Forum, in the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. It came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, it was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called you, for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters of Judea concerning thee, neither any other brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him to a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive, for the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. All right, that was the end of Acts, guys, and now we're going to start the first two chapters of Romans. Let's go ahead. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. All, the servant of Jesus Christ. By the way, I said this in all my other uh, videos of Romans. This is an epistle, a.k.a. a letter, to Christians uh 
early Christians in Rome. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets and holy scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prepos uh, prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft times I purposed to come unto you, but was left hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the universe. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's a great verse. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen to that verse. Romans 1.16 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but because vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the nature use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, and unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that judge the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. 
And thinkest thou this, man, uh, thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness inundation and wrath tribulation anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil even of the jews first and also the gentile but glory honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the jew first and also to the gentile For there is no respect of persons with god for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by laws. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law by, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, but show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thou boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed after the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. The instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal? Dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through the breaking of the law dishonorest thou God? The name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, for the circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, should not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god okay so that's gonna be it for today guys we went a little long but tomorrow we will be reading more romans so i can't wait because i really like romans especially three i mean there's a lot of romans that i love but Romans 3 is, is really great. So, Thanks for joining me. Hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him. Have trust in Him. And wait upon Him and you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Romans. Thanks again and take care.